I believe you'll be thinking maybe I need the help of God so that I will have money. <clears throat> you need the help of God so that you can know when season have what? Change. If God does not help you, your case will become once upon a time. You need the help of God to identify when seasons are changing. You must follow the trend of Jesus. And to follow the trend of Jesus, you must continue to ask him to help you. When you live in a negative past, it will bring fear to your present. When you live in a negative past, it will bring discouragement. When you live in a negative past, it will kill your passion for tomorrow. And let me also tell you, yesterday's success can give birth to today's failure. Give me a few minutes of your time. Jesus wants to talk to us. Are you ready? Let me tell you, this season is a season where you don't need to be shy. Prophet T.B. Joshua says something. He said, those who are not ashamed to humble themselves under Jesus have taken the best source to secure themselves. If you are so conscious of things around you and you cannot run to Jesus for help, not at all. The time we are living in is a time where everyone need the help of God. Everyone need the help of who? Need the help of who? Need the help of who? God. Look to your neighbor. Say you need the help of God. Say there is no need to pretend. Neighbor. Look at another neighbor. Say neighbor. No pretense. We. You and I. We need the help of Jesus. Yes. There is no pretense at all. We are in a season where the best prayer point for this season is Jesus, help me. Jesus, do what? Jesus, do what? Jesus, do what? You don't need to go too far. Jesus, help me. I tell you, the Bible says, if the Lord have not built a house, he said the builder we build but they we build in vain if the lord have not watches over a city not that there will be no watchman he said but the watchman they are watching but in what in vain nothing else no prayer point in this season greater than this simple word. Jesus, help me. When you go to your quiet place to pray, say, Jesus, help me. When you see your children, say, come, let us pray. Don't tell them to start praying for this and say, Jesus, help us. We need help. We need help. Another word for help is rest. Another word for rest is help. Another word for help is rest. When Jesus help you, he give you rest. When Jesus give you rest, he help you. This is the greatest prayer you can pray in this season, Mba month. September, October, November, December. I give you this as a doctor prescription, take it and begin to use it at all time. When you go to God, don't begin to brag. Don't begin to brag and say, you know, I just finished fasting. Oh God, I just finished three days fasting. I just finished all night prayer. Congratulations to you, prayer warrior. 
everyone can pray. But God, look for you to get to a point when you say, no, Lord, if you don't help me, where else can I go? No way. No way, if you don't help me, where else can I go? No way, no way. You listen to that? There is no help outside Jesus. There is no help outside who? Jesus. And the reason why you need the help of God, let me tell you why. The reason why you need the help of God so that you will know when season has changed. I believe you will be thinking maybe I need the help of God so that I will have money. Mm -mm. You need the help of God so that you can know when season have what? Change. If God does not help you, your case will become once upon a time. If Jesus did not help you, man of God, you, your anointing, your ministry will become once upon a time. Businessman, if Jesus does not help you sooner or later, they say, What a wonderful business! Today, when you watch the news, I think Facebook or other social media does this, they recap some old product and bring it for you to tell you that this product was existing in 1990. And today, where are they? They have fade out. Like see if they don't exist anymore. They were once upon a time the best in the town. Once upon a time the most valuable product. Once upon a time. You need the help of God to identify when seasons are changing. There are people today, when you meet them, all they have to tell you is the glory of yesterday. You say, do you know that yesterday I was a rich man? Where were you when season change? What happened to you? He it says, it's just because of the COVID that hit the world. It's just because of the disease, the attack. That come upon the earth not at all your challenge is that you don't run to jesus for help that is why you did not know that season have changed we will not continue to remain in this season mm. no matter how good or bad your life appear to be now season will continue to change but only those who can run to Jesus for help can have a lasting success. If not, once upon a time, I was beautiful. Once upon a time, I was rich. Once upon a time, I was a governor. Once upon a time, and who cares about who you were yesterday? Because the Bible says Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and you must follow the trend of Jesus. And to follow the trend of Jesus, you must continue to ask him to help you. The father of the demon-possessed boy, tell Jesus. He said, Jesus, I believe but help my unbelief. In other words, don't allow me in this journey alone. If you allow me to go and study the whole Bible, 
to learn how to have faith, I believe my child will die before I finish. This season we are in, learn to cry for help. Not just the help of man, the help of Jesus Christ. People live in their yesterday, brothers and sisters. A lot of people who are not connected to Jesus, they live in their yesterday. Each time you see them, they tell you about the applause. Some are not even living in their good yesterday. Some in their bad yesterday. When you see them, they tell you, Daniel, you know that my life was miserable yesterday. You know that things were not working out for me. Nobody trained me. Nobody take care of me. Nobody do this thing to me. Let me tell you, if you continue to give excuse about your negative yesterday, your future is not guaranteed. Your future is not guaranteed if you live in your yesterday. Let me show you a scripture in the Bible. Isaiah 43 and verse 18. Look at this now. A popular scripture in the Bible. Can we read together? He said, do not remember the what? I can't hear you, church. The what? The former things. If I may ask you, what are former things? What are former things? Former things may be good. Former things may be bad. I hope you know the word former things. That is everything that was in your yesterday. Which one are you remembering now? Some of you, your yesterday was ugly. Some of you have a beautiful yesterday. A glorious yesterday. But the Bible gives a warning to every believer. Listen to it again. It said, do not remember the former thing. Nor consider the things of old. Let me give you the example of the word consider. The word consider means don't overstay there. Some of you camp around and build a monument around your yesterday. Do you know who I was? Do you know I'm the former commissioner of this state? Your yesterday. Do you know that uh, we were the one that started this presidency? in this country yesterday whether good or bad the bible wants you to forget them prophet tb joshua says stop reliving your past your past failure past defeat in your present life you keep bringing everything from yesterday there are many marriages today that are destroyed because their husband or their wife keep reminding the other party of everything they've done you know you slept with someone 1980. You know you cheated on me in 2020. You know they did this thing years and years ago. And the marriage was destroyed. When you live in a negative past, listen to me. When you live in a negative past, it will bring fear to your present. When you live in a negative past, it will bring discouragement. When you live in a negative past, it will kill your passion for tomorrow. Some of you cannot press on today. Say, man of God, do you know I have tried? I have done many business, but nothing work. Why are you not doing anything now? It's a man of God. 10 years ago, 15 years ago, when I tried to stand up by myself, someone duped me. After 15 years of someone duping you, you've not started anything again. You are still living in your yesterday. Anytime. You keep living in your negative or ugly yesterday. 
Maybe things were not good. Nobody trained you to school. Nobody really cared for you. Maybe your husband never was not the best for you. Maybe you enter a wrong house, a wrong home. Unfortunately, but after many years, if you camp around it, it will create fear for you. It will create discouragement for you. Tell your neighbor, say, don't dwell in your past. I can hear you say, don't dwell in your past. Say, don't dwell in your past. Say, don't dwell in your past. We dwell in the past too much. And that is why we never say a better tomorrow. Oh, that is why. Brothers and sisters, you cannot have a glorious tomorrow while living in the past. One of the beautiful things about Olympic, when you want to run and finish well, you never look at your opponent. Yes or no? Have you seen anybody that is running forward and looking back? In an Olympic match before? Have you seen that before? Anyone that wants to be a winner must focus only at the front. Why are you looking back? Looking back is a trap of the enemy. Looking back is a trap of Satan. Some of you will have been raised and become great today. Because of your failure of yesterday, you were afraid to take another step. Let me encourage you with what Prophet T.B. Joshua says. He said, I have never seen any successful man who have never failed in the past. I have never seen any successful man or woman who have never failed in the past. If you see anyone who have never failed, you are standing before a risk. Success is given birth to by many failures. You that keep complaining and say things are not good rather than starting again and starting again and ignoring the failure of yesterday and ignoring the shame of yesterday, ignoring the defeat and start again. You say, no. Man of God, we just lost to the family. Why are you telling us to start again? Start what again? Let me tell you, as long as you are alive, you are alive to start again. As long that you are breathing, the battle is not over. As long that you can see a new day, try again. Keep living and telling people, if I have seen someone to help me, my life won't be like this. If I have seen someone to bless me, my career won't be like this. Your excuse will not be excused by Jesus on the last day. I'm telling you, Champions are those who never give up in the midst of their yesterday. Take a lesson from this woman I, I mentioned in the Bible, the prostitute. She had an ugly yesterday, but as many that were laughing at her, she said, no, I will focus on only Jesus. She carried an expensive perfume. That is the money she gained from the prostitution. I hope you know that. A prostitute received money from what? From prostitute. She carried it all as shame. And run after Jesus. And at the end of the day, our ugly past was transformed. We win if you don't allow your yesterday to stop you. But if you keep living in your yesterday, there is no future for you. So the negative yesterday produces fear. The negative yesterday produces discouragement. The negative yesterday produces or kill your passion to start again. Let me show you a man in the Bible. Turn with me to the book of Judges. The book of Judges chapter 6 from verse 12. And the angel of the Lord appeared to who? To him. This is Gideon now. This is a discussion between God and Gideon. Appeared to Gideon and said to him, The Lord is with who? You mighty man of who? Of valor. Verse 13 now. 
Gideon said to him, Oh my God, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to who? To us. And where are his miracles, which our father told us about, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has what? Has what? And deliver us in the hands of the whole, the Midianites. Listen to this. God is talking about the future of someone. The person is talking about the past. <laughs> God is talking about your future. You are even talking about your past. Now, let's watch the next verse now. Watch this. Then the Lord turned to him and said, Go in this might of yours, and you shall save who? From the hands of the who? Have I not sent you? Verse 15. Now, look at his response. Pay attention to this scripture. Because as long as you live in your yesterday, there is no hope. So Gideon said to him, Oh my Lord, how can I save Israel? Indeed, my clan, that is my family, is the wicked in way Manasseh. Are you seeing that now? And I am the least in my what? May this not be your confession. I say may this not be your confession. God said, go. He said, God, why will I go? Are you not aware of the background I came from? I am from Nazareth. And they said, nothing good come out of Nazareth. God is talking about his future. He's taking God and saying, come back, God. What you are saying is unthinkable. What you are saying is un unimaginable. That is how we are doing today. Let me tell you, many are times when God shows you a dream, God is telling you your future. But when you wake up, you say, Abba, I have a good dream today. It's just that I don't have food to eat. And God said, what is the relationship between your future and your past? God keep reminding you through dreams, through encounter, through many things that you are mighty. Some of you sleep and see yourself doing greater things. But when you wake up, you say, ah, all this kind of funny, funny dream I used to have, self, I don't even understand them. And God said, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. Don't be discouraged about your present now. I know no one is to help you. I know you can't see the future. But be careful not to go and live in your yesterday. He said, my family we are the least in the whole community. And apart from my family being the least, in my entire family too, among my siblings, I am also the least. This means the least of the least. How many of you are discouraged in life because you cannot look beyond your present situations? How many of you are frustrated today because he's a man of God, I've tried this business like five times. I hope you know there is, there is a drink called Seven Up. If you know the drink, let me see your hand. Seven Up. If you know that drink, let me see your hand. I think it's a Coca-Cola product. Am I right? Okay, wonderful. Do you know how they came about it? Seven Up means they fail six times and the seventh one, they get it right. That is why they call the name six down and seven up. They say that will be the name because we try. Why are you afraid of your past? Why are you afraid? Let me tell you, in the midst of your failure, I want you to have this revelation. Don't think that your yesterday has carried the gift of God out of you. No. No matter how hot a fire is, God never reduces quality. Yes or no? 
no matter the intensity of the fire, as hot as fire may be, in short, the more you put fire, the more the gold is refined. Who tell you that because nobody helped you, now you don't have the calling of God again? Who tell you because the business, your uncle could not give you the money to start? That means you are not called a businessman. Who tell you your prophetic, your vision as a prophet and prophetess have been destroyed because you don't have members yet? Who is indoctrinating you? Never admit or accept your yesterday does not have the capacity to remove what God has deposited in you. That is why the Bible says, if any man being Christ is a new creature, there is no condemnation for those in Christ, Christ Jesus. Jesus by his blood I have been made free there is no condemnation for anyone who is in Christ stop judging yourself by your past failures stop judging yourself by your past mistake man of God can I still be great oh yes I can answer that question, but Jesus have an answer to that question. As far as Jesus give you life, you are still in his master plan. No, you are still, as far as he give you life, oh, but I commit abortion. But man of God, can God still forgive me? Ah, if God cannot forgive you again, you're not supposed to wake up this morning. You're waking up is a sign that there is something good ahead of you. But many of us, Satan blindfold us and tell us that because of our ugly past, we can never be great again. We can't be great. Man of God, if you hear the sin I have committed, you will not even bother to lay your hand on me. I see many people They run away from God out of their many sins and their mistake in the past. T.B. Joshua says, See, when you make mistake as we all do, he said, Don't run from God. He said, But run to God. Jesus Christ is calling you and is using this message to bring you back. He knows your past is dirty, He knows your past is unthinkable, unimaginable. Have you been a murderer in the past? Let me tell you, like Saul, you can still be Apostle Paul. I'm telling you, are you a prostitute? You've lived a wayward life in the past. Like the prostitute, let me tell you, you can still be a woman of noble character. Are you filled with anger and bitterness? The Bible says, I have seen an angry man become gentle. You will not be the first. What is your condition? Take your eyes away from that your past. Ugly past. Take your eyes away from how nasty. Some of us even have a past whereby probably when we are growing up, we were molested. I say, ah, because of the molestation, I can't trust any man. I can't trust any woman. When you live in your past, you and your future are destroyed. Satan uses our past to imprison us. And to destroy the God's giving glory in us. Satan cannot touch your destiny. Yea, today. Satan though cannot touch your destiny. But he can only make you to be guilty and condemned. And be afraid that you never arrive there. But when you hear this message, let me tell you. Tell yourself. Those things that God tell you in the past. Maybe he told you I will lift you up. Maybe he told you I'm going to bless you. Maybe he told you in the past that he's going to raise your family. Don't joke with those words. Satan can't stop it. It may take time, but it will surely come to pass. I am not telling you that it may happen now. It may take time, but it must surely come to pass. If he has said it, 
Church, I can't hear you. If he has said it, then he will do it. He has a track record of keeping his word. He's not about to stop doing love. Do you hear it now? He will not stop bringing beauty out of ashes. You are not the first to be bound, but in your ashes, he can still bring beauty out of it. Stop living in your negative yesterday. And let me also tell you, there are some of you, what is killing you is your positive yesterday. I was the local government chairman. I was the governor, CBN governor of Nigeria. That is what has killed many of us today. There are many failures today. What makes them fail is because they succeed yesterday. Yesterday's success can give birth to today's failure. Yesterday, success can do what? Give birth to today's failure. Listen to me. We are done with the ugly ones. Let's go to the beautiful ones. Because some of us, truly our parents were blessed. Truly we were prince and king in the past. And today, people look at you and say, is this not the son of that rich man? Is this not the son of that wealthy man? Is this not once upon a time? Have you seen governors of the past, prime ministers of the past, maybe 10, 15, 20 years ago, prime minister, after they left the office, you know, when they are governors, you can see a lot of security and everything and entertainment all around them. But immediately they leave the power. It's as if they take life away from them because success can also give birth to failures. Probably you meet them in occasion and say, my God, this was my former president. What happened? But the Bible says the path of the just is as a shining light that's supposed to shine brighter onto a better day. How what happened that your yesterday was not better than your today? What is the cause? Something happened. Let me tell you, when you live in your glorious yesterday, it will produce complacency. It will produce pride. It will produce indiscipline. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I was so good yesterday. I was so powerful yesterday. I was so mighty yesterday. When you live in that yesterday, something will begin to happen to you. Do you know what will happen? Pride will come in. A glorious yesterday produce pride of today. A rich yesterday produce laziness and poverty of today. I have it yesterday. Do you know that we are not equal at all in anything? I know we are not equal. I know, but if you are not vigilant enough, that your rich and your glory will become once upon a time. Once upon a time. Brothers and sisters, pride is not far from those who dwell in their glorious yesterday. Indiscipline is not far from those who dwell in their glorious yesterday. Complacency, relax. Why should I stress myself? I have worked the work of my days and of my generation. Who tell you that you have worked? When Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let me tell you, never relax in your yesterday, whether good or bad. The beautiful thing about it, both a bad yesterday and a good yesterday can still destroy your tomorrow. Tell your neighbor, say, a good yesterday and a bad yesterday, a glorious yesterday and an ugly yesterday, they can destroy your future.
turn with me to the book of same Judges again. Judges chapter 16. Now see a beautiful yesterday. Watch this now. Can we read together? When Delilah saw that he has told her all his what? Who are we talking about here? Who are we talking about here? Who are we talking about here? I hope you know that Samson's strength was excellent. For Bible to recognize Samson's strength, a man who can fight a whole army, not a neighbor, not two, three people, do you know, entire army. A man full of strength, power, undefeated. For Bible to record you as the strongest man, you should know what it means. He has conquered territories. He has done a lot. But something was about to happen. He get to a time, he tells himself, of course I have results. Anytime anybody come, all I need to do is just to shake myself. And when I shake myself, I destroyed nations. Something can't fight you. He can't, you are too small for him to fight. You can't provoke him to fight you. He fights cities. Who are you? A man who can fight the whole entire... If you come to a quiet bomb, beat everybody, beat all the army, beat everyone, and remove your city gates with one hand. I hope you know it's not the gate of a house. A city gate. To remove a city... This is a door. You try and remove the door. Now think about a gate here. Now think about a city gate. Remove it with his hand and hang it and say, let me see anyone who crossed this place. That was glorious. Yes or no? That was what? That was glorious. Excellent. But something happened to this young man. Filled with strength. Filled with passion. Filled with energy. Let us read. When Delilah saw that he has told her all his heart. She sent and called for the Lord of the what? The Philistine. Saying, come up once more. For he has told me all his heart. What a pity. So the Lord of the Philistine came up to her. And brought the money in her hand. Hold on, let me tell you something. Many people say Delilah kissed Samson. Here is it. It was money that killed him. What killed Samson? What killed Samson? What killed Samson? Money. There was money transaction involved because she would not have done it for any reason. What any city could not do, money did it. I hope you understand now. Each time you read say that, you keep watching film of Delilah and Samson. You didn't watch the one where the, where, the, where the money was transacted. If there was no money involved, Delilah is a prostitute. Would not have done anything like that. He said, tell me. Imagine you go and meet Delilah and say, Delilah, come. Come, Danny. So you will help me to get something. So I will want to capture something. So you go and lure him to tell you the secret. Say, for what? What is my business with Samson? Is he obstructing my business? Is he obstructing the prostitution I'm doing? Oh no. But when they tell her that he will give you 1.2 billion, he said, all right, I go for it. Uh, is he not? One, what do you say again? 1.2 billion. He said, Samson, you are dead. You are dead. I tell you the truth. Only I don't know what God... I don't know which God you serve. But what city could not do? Money did it. Then she lured him to sleep on her knees and called for a man and had him shave off the seven locks of his what? Then she began to do what? To torment him and his strength and his strength, and his strength. This is excellent man of yesterday. I hope you know that. A man who have defeated many people. A man who have resolved. A man who was on top.
But because of indiscipline, I told you a glorious yesterday will produce indiscipline, carelessness, complacency, relax, and pride inside of you. Check how you how your business collapsed yesterday. You will know that beef. When that business was moving, you were not praying again. You were talking to every worker anyhow. Please, I want to close my shop. Please, I want to do this. Don't forget that a great business can also produce failure too. When pride comes into what you are doing, I know your business is moving on, but I hope you are disciplined enough. When your business begins to be, I mean, growing, that your company begins to promote you, Every staff, you want to sleep with them. Ah, failure is on the way coming. When you begin to have cash, you begin to, you, anything your wife tell you now, you don't listen. You say, keep your mouth shut. You are a woman. I'm a woman? Because you have money now, dear man, I've become a woman. A glorious yesterday brings pride indiscipline bring complacency and destruction not only the negative one some of you it was promotion that killed you it was a promotion the transfer the breakthrough you receive that finally give you the sickness you are battling with today because when the breakthrough came you run say i have money now i can go to club and sit and say, all right, let's go. I can go to the best. You tell your wife, I'm going for a business trip in the neighboring town. Not knowing that you're in a neighboring club there. And today you are in the church telling God, can you remove this gonorrhea for me? <laughs> God said, you have to serve him with that gonorrhea. Because that is what a glorious yesterday today can produce in us. Some of us, this is where we miss it all. When God begins to bless you, be careful. When God begins to lift you, be careful. When God begins to promote you, be careful. Man of God, be careful. Ah, now my church have grown. Even if I don't pray, I will still, I will still pray. Of course you will pray. Something will happen. No doubt about it. Be careful. Your case will soon become once upon a time. No, people love me so much. Can't you see when I came out, everybody was shouting, be careful. We live in a generation. People can clap you to your grave. Be careful. How you are doing well. You are doing well. Have the wisdom to let everything man are saying and say, God, please, as you lift me, let my knee be on the ground. I tell you that the season we are in is a season of help season of divine help check the challenge that surround you it's not far from your negative yesterday and your positive yesterday this is Samson Samson an excellent man in strength but look at what is about to happen to him let us continue she said the Philistines are upon you Samson so Samson woke up from his sleep and said I will go out as what? I will go out as what? As before. I will do what I used to do before. Even though if I don't study, I will, be, I will still pass the exam. Even though if I don't pray and fast, I'm a man of God. I have revelation. I can come to service. I don't need to think about anything. Some say I will do what I used to do before. When pride finish you, when you do what you used to do before, it will not work. When pride eats you like a wheat, when you do what you used to do before, I assure you it will not work. Something say, I will go out like before, and I will shake myself. Let's see what happened to him. Learn a lesson from this. I will go out as before at the other time, and I will shake myself free. Wonderful. But he did not know that the Lord 
has what? Maybe you did not hear it again. Let us read it again. But he did not know that what? One more time. He did not know that the Lord has what? May this not be your testimony. I say that may it not be your testimony. He did not know the Lord has departed. Indiscipline can make the Lord depart and you will not know. You can be doing ministry, the Bible says, and the wine finish in the ceremony. The Lord may have departed. Be careful. There is a side effect to growth. There is a side effect to success. There is a side effect when God begins to lift you and everybody begins to see you, see your business, see your family. And will not know that you are being careless. You are not being sensitive anymore. The Lord have departed. There are people when God bless them, no wisdom, nothing, nothing. They go to their village with expensive car. You know, all those villages that are not tied. They drive the motor any hard to draw mark on the road. We are the one using this expensive car in this. Who, who else can have this car? And after two, three years, everything about your business collapsed. There was no wisdom, indiscipline, pride, complacency, relaxation. Let me tell you one thing. The remedy to this situation is found in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 12. Paul says, not that I have already attained or I am already perfect, but I press on that I may load hold of that for which Christ Jesus have also laid hold for me. Verse 13 now. Look at this. Brethren, I do not count myself to have what? Apprehended. That means I have not arrived. Some of you arrive before even God take you there. They say they are going to give you a job. You have already told your whole world. Or a company. And suddenly... They say, sorry, oh, it was not your name. It was someone else's name. But you've told you the whole world. Go back and tell them that it was a mistake. Listen to this. It says, but one thing I do, forgetting those things that are what? Forgetting those things that are what? Behind. And reaching forward to those things that are what? Ahead. The next verse says, verse 14. He say, I press. Say, I press. I can't even say, I press. I say, say, I press. Say it like you mean. Say, I press. Say, I press. This is where the solution is. I press. I press towards the goal. I press towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. I'll forever be chasing after you. I'll be chasing after you. I'll forever be chasing after you. I'll be chasing after you. Let me tell you, don't stop running after Jesus. Forget those your glory in the past. Forget those your errors, those your shame in the past. It is not needed. Jesus never consults your past to determine your future. Don't take Jesus back when he's taking you forward. Don't be afraid of your ugly past. No one asks you, where were you coming from? What did you do yesterday? This is the presence of God. Prophet Joshua says, your past is over. Your past is what? Your past is what? It's over. Please learn this today and become a champion forever. Oh, my yesterday was not good at all. Don't worry. God has a better plan for you. Oh, my yesterday was so wonderful. Man of God, I was living well yesterday. I don't know what happened. Hold on. It is not over yet. Better is not good enough. The best. God bless you. I hope you understand. So take this message up. Take it home. 
Let it revive you. It's not a message of condemnation. It's a self-examination. It is time to be revived. It is time to examine yourself. It is time to tell yourself the truth. I think I have to clean up myself and move on from all these shackles. I'm blaming society. I'm blaming the president. The president is somewhere enjoying himself. You are shifting all the blame to him. Wake up from those realities. If God is with you, nothing can be against you. I live in this economy and nothing, nothing. We told you that this year is a glorious world. It's a glorious world. It's a glorious year. As a Christian, your path will continue to shine like a shining light. And it will shine brighter onto a better day. But you can stop your shine by always looking back. Your mistake, your shame, your difficulty. Tell your neighbor, say, throw away your past. I can't hear you. Say, throw away your past. Say, throw away your past and move on to tomorrow. Say, throw away the past. Say, throw away that past. Better is waiting for you. In Jesus' name. I feel it in my spirit that you are relieved. Are you relieved? Are you relieved? Where is the condemnation? What of the fear? Are you ready to start again? Are you ready to start again? Tell your neighbor it's time to start again. Say it's time to start again. Touch someone, say it is time to start again. Give a handshake, say neighbor it's time to start again.